I'd like to begin today by providing uh, some context for my remarks. There's a lot of media scrutiny of Federal Open Market Committee deliberations and Federal Open Market Con Committee um, decision making. That media scrutiny tends to focus on the differences among committee participants towards, uh, about their views towards uh, appropriate monetary policy. I think what sometimes gets lost in that conversation is actually the elements of monetary policy that we, sh we share, that we, bring, you know, we, we, we share in common. Now, one such element, of course, are the goals of monetary policy. When we come together at FOMC meetings to make monetary policy, it's in order to achieve congressionally mandated uh, goals for the, for the Federal Open Market Committee, promoting price stability, promoting maximum employment. But beyond those high-level objectives, the committee has established principles for underlying its long-run goals and strategies. And these were released uh, described in a document that was released in uh, January of 2012. It's five paragraphs long, enjoyed broad FOMC support among, among participants. And it really should be read by anybody, I think, who's interested in uh, United States monetary policy because of the, of the of uh, the fact that it's, it is held, uh, was agreed to by, by so many of the FOMC participants. You know, one, one piece of this document that's gotten a lot of attention is, and quite rightly so, is that it establishes a, a numerical target uh, for inflation of 2% per year. And I think this target will serve the committee well, and has already has done so, and will continue to serve the committee well in keeping in, uh, inflation expectations anchored. So I mentioned it was released in January 2012 with broad FOMC support. It was reaffirmed in January this year, again with, with broad uh, committee support. What I want to talk about today is how to operationalize these commonly held FOMC principles. And in particular, I'm going to focus on what I view as the most operational of the five paragraphs in the statement, uh, uh, namely the last one. And here's, here is paragraph five. Uh, I won't, uh, the whole paragraph is there for you to read. But what I want to focus on uh, to begin with is the emboldened text. The committee seeks to mitigate deviations of inflation from its longer run goal. So I'm going to begin by pretending that the Federal Reserve was a central bank with a single mandate of promoting price stability. If that were the case, if the Fed had only that one mandate of promoting price stability, then this would be, I think, a, an adequate description of its long-run strategy to mitigate deviations of inflation from its longer-run goal. If that were a description of the, the committee's strategy, how would it sort out between appropriate and inappropriate policies? I think this chart is very helpful along those lines. This is a chart that describes the evolution of, uh, an infla of inf the inflation outlook uh, as we go off into the future under two distinct monetary policy stances. One described, uh, one, uh, under one monetary policy stance, the, the outlook uh, as we go off, off into the future is described by the red line. Under the other monetary policy stance, the, uh, the outlook is described by the green line. Let me talk first about the red, red line, the, the monetary, monetary policy stance that's giving rise to the red curve. That, under that uh, mon uh, stance for monetary policy, the inflation rate is returning to its desired level of pi star within three years, 12 quarters. Okay, so the pi star here, I've left it as abstract, but uh, of course the, the committee uh, uh, elsewhere in the, the uh, principal statement has affirmed that to be 2%. So we're returning under the, uh, the red uh, policy stance to the long run target within three years. But we generally think of monetary policy as being effective at one to two years. And that means that by adding monetary policy accommodation, we can actually get back to target more rapidly. And that's what's shown in the green outlook. That we're under this monetary policy stance, Inflation is returning to its long-run objective, long-run uh, goal, within eight quarters, that is two years. Now, under the second monetary policy stance, the committee is doing 
a more effective job of mitigating deviations of inflation from its long run objective. And why do I say that? Well, at any point in time, the outlook for inflation uh, under the second monetary policy stance, the green one, is closer to the, uh, the long run target of, of, of pi star than under the, red, under the red outlook. Except, of course, after three years when they're both the same. So this kind of outlook chart helps you sort out between what kinds of policy stances are appropriate and inappropriate. In particular, the red one, or the red outlook is inappropriate because you can do better in mitigating deviations of inflation from its long run objective um, by adding accommodation. So all this was under the pretense, of course, that the Fed has only a single mandate, when in fact it actually has a, a dual mandate, and that's what I want to turn to next. And the, the principal statement is very alive to the fact that there is a dual mandate uh, that the, the, the committee has to meet. So we go to the fifth paragraph. It says that the committee seeks to mitigate deviations of inflation from its longer run goal and deviations of employment from the committee's assessments of its maximum level. Now generally, as, a, as a, the, the, the principal statement says, these are complementary objectives. What that means is if you're going to get inflation, getting inflation back down to 2% within, uh, or, or back up to 2% uh, within uh, two years, you're going to be returning uh, employment back to its, uh, the, the assessment of its maximum level in that same time frame. What I want to talk about is uh, in the more interesting case, when these objectives uh, are not complementary, and what do you do in that case? Well, the committee has said it's going to take a balanced approach to the mitigation of deviations of inflation and the deviations of employment. What does a balanced approach mean? Well, the statement is uh, leaving room for judgment among policymakers along that dimension. But what, one thing it does mean, I think, is that you're putting weight on both mandates. You're not focusing exclusively on the employment mandate. You're not focusing exclusively on the price stability mandate, but rather you're looking at both and making your decisions about what policy stance is appropriate or not. So how, given this uh, language of the committee's strategy, how do we sort out between what policy stances are appropriate or inappropriate? Again, I think this kind of outlook charts are very informative along that dimension. Now I have two charts, one describing the evolution of inflation, the inflation outlook as, as time unfolds, and uh, the other describing the, uh, the, uh, the evolution of the unemployment outlook as time unfolds. Under, again, two distinct monetary policy stances, one corresponding to the red outlooks for inflation and unemployment, and the other corresponding to the green outlooks for inflation and unemployment. Let me begin again with the red outlook. Under the, that monetary policy stance, inflation is returning to its long run objective within two years, eight quarters. We, under a single mandate, if we had only, if the Fed had only one mandate, we had to judge that policy stance to be appropriate because we're getting back to, you know, to target within, within that two-year time frame. But now we have two mandates. To look at what's going on with some metric corresponding to the, to the employment uh, mandate, I mean, the usual metric that we use is the unemployment rate. See here, the unemployment rate is returning to its long run, to, to, I should say to its desired level, uh, what's consistent with maximum employment, U star here, you know, over a long period of time, well beyond three years. This monetary policy stance cannot be described as being balanced in its approach to the two mandates. It's focusing exclusively on price stability, on getting inflation back, mitigating in, uh, deviations of inflation from its long run goal. A balanced approach would be willing to give up a little bit on the on inflation, on the price stability mandate, in order to get a faster return of unemployment to its desired level of use to on. That's what the green outlook um, corresponds to. By adding accommodation relative to the red, out, uh, the red uh, the policy stance is generating the red outlooks, by adding accommodation, we're able to get a faster return of unemployment to its, its long run objective of U star. But um, there's a cost associated with that because it pushes uh, inflation above the desired level of pi star. But that's what balance means. You're willing to give up on, a little bit on the inflation, on the inflation uh, uh, mitigating deviations of inflation from its long run objective in order to get this faster return of unemployment to its, its long run, uh, to, to, to U star, what's assessed to be consistent with maximum employment. 
Now, how big is this gap? Well, that's going to be up to policymakers' judgment. But you do know that there should be a gap. Because if there's no gap, then you're not using a balanced approach between the two mandates. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Um, talk, I talked about the FOMC's principal statement, which outlines its long-run goals and strategies. And I, I discussed how that statement actually provides a great deal of clarity about how to assess what kinds of monetary policy stances are appropriate and inappropriate in, uh, under our dual mandate. Thank you.